I'm joined now by photographer Ruth Yarrow. Ruth, I was just telling you, you have photographed some friends of mine. It seems like everybody who's like a mover and shaker in Fort Wayne, you have done photos of. Oh. So let me start with when you fell in love with photography. Yeah. Well, it started, I was 14. Um, I went up to visit my cousin up in Wisconsin and we started playing around with my uncle's camera. Just, he had an old film camera and so we just kind of spent the whole week just like taking photos of each other. And that was when I started to like really discover that like, oh, this is really like fun, like I love this. So when I went back home, I, my parents had a film camera so I started like paying my sister to be a model <laughs> and you know, photographing all my friends. And I always just kind of did it as a hobby because at that point in time it was just, I was, I did perform arts and so I thought that was kind of the direction I was gonna go so it was always just more like a hobby to me something that I enjoy doing and it wasn't until I was in my mid-20s when I really started to kind of switch switch gears and kind of go more use photography as like a, a career path. Was it different when you kind of picked it back up because I imagine that it was then digital and yeah the I feel like anybody who falls in love with taking film photographs um, has has to kind of re-fall in love with the art. Did you find that? Um, a little bit. It was, I think what I enjoyed about the digital aspect of it was the editing because mm. it was, for me, editing is when the photos really come to life. I see like, cause I always like, when I go into any kind of shoot, I have a visual in my head of how I want the photos to look. And when I get to edit them, then I get to like really see that come to life. Cause mm. like photographing is definitely a big aspect of it, but then the editing also brings a lot of things a lot of things out and a lot of things to life, at least so, for me. Speaking of bringing things to life, I just don't understand how photographers are able to take lifestyle photos, um, you know, you take a photo of this chair and you somehow make it look so cool when there isn't any life there. How do you do that? What is it about your process that allows that to work? For me, a lot of it is like kind of going in, having kind of a vision in your in your head of kind of how you want something to look. And then also a really big aspect to photography is lighting. Light, no matter if it's mm -hmm. artificial light, natural light, mm -hmm. how the, t the settings in your camera, that really is what kind of can make or break a photo is the light and how you use it, how, do you, how you utilize it. Um, that's what really can bring even so a subject like a chair to life. Now, what I love so much is your portrait work because I feel like everybody you photograph, you, you can see their personality. You're able to get that out of them. Is that just an innate skill you have or is there a trick to it or... I guess it's probably a mixture. Like, so I usually try to like ask questions beforehand, kind of like, what are your goals for, you know, for this portrait session? Like, do you have it? Is it for your business? Is it for personal reasons? Like, do you have something, a vision in mind for it? And just kind of asking them some questions, kind of, and also like sometimes it's following them on social media just to kind of get an idea of like who they are, like mm. from what they post. Um, and then just having conversations during like the portrait session, just kind of asking questions and kind of getting, just kind of having a conversation like we're doing now like in between taking pictures because that can kind of relax relax everybody and kind of make you feel comfortable and when you feel because having your photo taken is very vulnerable yeah. you feel very vulnerable because you know you have you don't you don't know what it's gonna look like and it's just it's it feels uncomfortable I feel uncomfortable when I get my photo taken <laughs> you know because you just it's vulnerable you yeah. feel very vulnerable and so that's where I feel like having conversation and try to make anyone I'm photographing feel as comfortable as possible is very, is a huge part of my process just because I feel like that can, it really changes how a photo is. If people feel comfortable with you, then it shows in their photos too and then their personality can come out. So tell me about sort of the logistics of, of what you do. You mentioned how important lighting is. When you, in your mid-20s, when you decided to kind of head in, in the direction of photography, what kind of learning curve is it to, to not just take a photo on your phone, which obviously we all do now, but to really use the camera as a tool? It's a lot of, like, there's a lot of learning involved. Like, you can have, like, the top of the line camera, but if you don't understand the settings, the deep, like, all the settings on it, it's it's going to look just like you're taking an iPhone. I mean, the picture yes. quality might be a little bit better, but yeah. it's 
not going to look much different. So it does take a lot of learning, understanding all your the technical settings because there's such a technical side to photography. Mm -hmm. Like you can, there's also a big part of obviously having a creative eye, but also having the technical side. It kind of go, they both go hand in hand. Um, and so that was there's a lot of learning. I took I took a few classes, but a lot of it was just trial and error. It was just doing a lot of photo shoots, taking a lot of photos, getting friends in front of the camera and just experimenting and seeing like what worked, what didn't work, what I liked, what I didn't like and trying things out. That was really a lot of like the whole practice makes perfect is oh, yeah. work goes just as, goes just as, yeah, goes, <laughs> <laughs> goes hand in hand with photography as with anything else, playing an instrument, um, being in a play, dancing, acting. So do you feel like you have settled on, maybe that's not the right way to say it, but do you think that you have established a, an aesthetic? If you, if there were a lineup of photos, would you be able to pick out which one was yours? I think so. I feel like I've tried to really, to really work on kind of what, what is, what I like, what is important to me when it comes to like my work, how I want it to look. And I really do love like a classic look with a little bit of film. Like I've still, I love the look of film. It's mm. just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, cause there's, there's so many photographers, like there's a, there's a lot of talented people. And I think, I think it's really important. It was really important for me to, instead of like copy someone I love or to try to like, you know, look similar to them was to figure out what it was my style. What, how do I want to present my photos? How, what do I love about like an image and so that was kind of that's kind of been my process I mean I, I look back through like years of photos and my like editing style my like photographing style has changed a lot but it's also as you grow as you keep learning as a person so it is like your style kind of changes and so I try to like not go like too to do too many extremes but just kind of as I feel like as I keep growing as I keep learning I feel like my everything keeps refining itself so how has your editing process changed because you mentioned that really a good photo is in the editing. Yeah. How much do you utilize Photoshop, for example? And when you're taking a photo, are you th already thinking about the edits you're going to make? Yes. Yeah, I usually, like, I mostly do just color correction. Um, I don't do a lot of heavy retouching or making people look like not themselves. Yeah. Like, I try to just do color correction, tonality. Um, and I do already think, like, as I'm going into a shoot, I'm like, okay, this is probably how I want to, like, color grade these images. This is how I think I want to like look to have them look like I start with a preset like I have a base preset that I start on like pretty much every image and then I tweak it based on lighting based on the color how the sun was based on the color of the room that day or just to like make everything look as true to life as possible but still have that same feel so that's kind of editing is definitely a big part for me because I feel like it does bring out bring everything to life a little bit more but it's still very minimal what is the hardest part of your job Hardest part of my job. Oh man, that's a good question. Um, I think I think some of it, like for me as an artist, like, and even like as being a small business owner, is putting myself out there. Mm. Is reaching, is being feeling like kind of having some of that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. with like reaching out to people and be like, "Hi, you, I would be a really good fit for you." And I think like that's and part of it is maybe my personality is someone who's more of an introvert. Like I'm not someone who just is gonna put myself right in front of someone and be like, "Hi, you need that." Like you, <laughs> I'm really I good be, at this. Yes, I'd be a really great fit for like your business, for your brand. Like it's that's a very that's a big struggle for me. Yes. It's just because it feels weird to like to sell myself I'm not a salesperson and so to kind of I think that's the hardest part is the hardest part of my job is probably trying to be a salesperson. Well you've managed to do it successfully because speaking of brands I mean you have worked with a lot of really big brands do you ever get beyond that imposter syndrome? You do at times. I mean, I think that's part of the whole, you kind of have to like, all right, this is scary, but I'm going to have to do it. Yeah. It's like, it's part of that taking, like growing as a human, as an individual, as an artist, as a business owner is saying, okay, this scares me, but I need to do it. I know I have to do this. And it's like taking, taking those steps to just kind of get past that fear, get past those mental, mental blocks and just saying, okay, I can do this. Like, I believe in myself. I can do this. I love that. You, we talked about looking back on old photos. Do you, even, even as you have evolved and, and styles sort of change, do you recognize that you've always been good at this? Yeah. 
I do. I do. I feel like as I look back at things, I mean, there's some, some times where I look back, I'm like, oh, that was so cringy. Why did I do that? <laughs> or why did I, why did I add fake sun flare into photos? <laughs> like, why did I think that was like a good thing to do? There's right. definitely those moments where it's like cringy, but I do see that I did have an eye all along that I do feel like I am good at what I do. I have always like been like had it there's been that talent there there's been that I have had that eye and so I do like feel very I do feel confident in my work why do you think art is important right I, always but right now in particular I think right now why it's so important is because art no matter no matter what medium it tells a story mm -hmm. in one way or another and I feel like right now there's so many stories that need to be told there's so many stories that are being told right now and I think whether it's with paintings, with photography, with film, with um, any medium, like there's a story to be told and there's so many stories that are happening right now that I think for, to look back on, like we need, we need to remember those things. And it's such a beautiful way of telling stories. Art, um, it's just, it's a beautiful way of sharing people's stories, the things that are going on, whether it's good, bad, ugly, terrifying, horrific, like art just gets people thinking. It makes people think and it moves people in a different way than just reading about it. Well, I couldn't have asked for a better answer. That was so, yes, yes, that's, that's it. And that's why we do what we do. So thank you so much for putting your art into the world and thanks for taking the time to sit down with me today. Thank you for having me. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by the Our Foundation and the Community Foundation of Greater Fort Wayne.